if you think about two people riding on a tandem bike, they're always going to be interacting with each other and, and that speed is going to be changing even if you're trying to set a specific speed. I will tell you that uh, as the person who trained a lot of those people, it was a lot of work for the trainer. Uh, the trainer ended up having to do about 80% um, of the work, uh, just because the disease itself, Parkinson's, causes slowness of movement, so it makes it difficult for those people to move quickly. We've actually developed a motorized bike to mimic the tandem bike so that we could look at how that affects people with Parkinson's. And we showed that our motorized bike actually shows very similar um, improvements in Parkinson's symptoms to that we saw on the tandem bike. And so that's a really important component to this bike that makes it unique from other motorized bikes out there. What we're showing um, in this study and previous studies that we've done before are that um, in most cases we're getting improvements in the symptoms of Parkinson's, specifically um, tremor, bradykinesia or slowness of movement, and also rigidity. So the patients are telling us that they're feeling much better and, and we look at those components by having them do a series of clinical tests. So those are the measures that we're looking at and we're seeing significant improvements in those after these bouts of dynamic cycling. Right now um, we are pretty much just doing it on our own. We're working with people at, at CASE and then Rockwell Automation. In the perfect world we're estimating maybe a couple years to actually be able to have something available to the public.